Hello everybody. Welcome to Club Fred. Today is day five of season three of my fantastic water fasting adventure commemorating two years since I began my 75 day fantastic water fasting adventure. I'm on a little bit of a road trip. I'm heading east to visit with my kids, even while respecting social distancing. It is just starting to rain. It's not the greatest day. So today is day five. I weighed myself this morning, which that weight represents four days of losses, and I've lost 11.4 pounds, 5%, 11.6 pounds, 5% of my body weight. I feel the difference. I feel really good. I have mental clarity. I have no anxiety. I feel purposeful. I feel productive. Yesterday, I blew my family's mind, I think. Um, I cooked a second pizza feast for them. Hey, I'm not eating it. I don't even... I can't never say never, but I don't eat carbs as a rule. But I cooked for them again because I did it the other day and they loved it so much. And they were just... They were just amazed <laughs> that I could cook those pizzas and not participate and eat with them. I think I blew their mind. My sister asked me, are you gonna feel tempted? And I said, no, not really, because I have just committed to this fast and I've closed the door on eating. But you know, if I opened that door, just a little crack, then I'm gone, I'm done. But closing the door and saying, oh, I'm not eating and not entertaining it or thinking about it or dreaming about it, I've just closed the door and, and it's easy. You know, so she said, well, but you looked like you enjoyed it the other day. And I, that was a Tuesday night. Today's Sunday, right? Tuesday night, I decided I would make them pizza. Look, I'm damn good at making that pizza, and I, and I make my own bread, and it, it is great for anybody who, I mean, aside from whether you should eat pizza or not, I mean, pizza is pizza, and I make a damn good pizza. And um, and they like, they like it. I'm, like I said, I make my own dough, and she said, well, you know, you seemed to really enjoy it. And I'm like, yes, but it's not a good food for me. It's not what I should eat. Now, that being said, I don't I don't think I have any autoimmune disorders. I don't think I have any kind of uh, gluten sensitivities after I ate that, even though I've been keto carnivore for two years with little cheats here and there, but not much. It's not like I exploded on the toilet or anything or had any real adverse effects. Except I think perhaps I my mental health suffers when I eat carbs. Anyway, today is day five. It is 3.30 in the afternoon, so the day is half over. I weighed in at 226.4 pounds and just four days ago I weighed in at 238 pounds you know I have shed uh, whatever extra water weight and inflammation that I, I had, I've shed that, and you know, I call it feeling fasting fabulous, um, this feeling, if you've never experienced it, 
at this point, day five, it's a little bit of hunger. I mean, it's about what I think it's going to be for the rest of this fast. This hunger doesn't entirely disappear. I don't know what people are talking about when they say, oh, no, I have no hunger. But the thing is, if you succumb to your feelings of hunger, even when those feelings are more intense. Like right now, I would say my hunger is a feeling of a of a two out of ten. And I, I think it's going to pretty much level off there. But if you're feeling more... Uh, if you're feeling more intense hunger, or you're feeling like it's more of a, a crisis, and you eat going to feel that same feeling again six eight hours later or tomorrow so it never it never it never ends right this eat and eat and eat to satiate our hunger and then we're satisfied and then we're hungry again so that food will be there when I'm finished my fast and I, I, I'm not anxious about it at all, about eating. I don't really care. I don't miss it. As a matter of fact, I feel really free from food right now. Uh, food planning, meal planning, anything. I'm going away for three nights. And I packed my little... Uh, my little gas stove and my little uh, Bialetti coffee maker and I brought some heavy whipped cream. I've been allowing myself some heavy whipped cream. It has zero carbs um, in my coffee and yesterday I had a bulletproof coffee but I'm not doing that every day. And it hasn't really affected my results and I'm doing this for weight loss only. And um, anything like any weight loss over a pound even is great. I'm not overly concerned about trying to uh, squeeze out more weight loss by excessive exercise or any anything else. It's good. So, but I did that thing and in the midst of that I was preparing for this trip a little bit so I cleaned out my car and I did three loads of wash and I rearranged my I stripped my bed and I washed my duvet cover and put all that back together I did a lot yesterday like a lot more than usual and I felt good like I had all of that energy but uh, I don't know, mid-afternoon I started to feel a little bit of a headache and it, and it started growing a little bit in intensity and a, around 6.30, 7 o'clock I laid down. I don't know if you can hear that way. But I thought to lay down. I wanted to rest. I've, I've also had a little bit of a sore back issue. I re-injured uh, my sciatic nerve which is something I did in November and I thought it was better. Started shoveling a little bit of dirt before I knew it. I had re-injured myself, so I'm, I'm trying to be careful. But anyway, I laid down because of the headache and it seemed to be also in my neck. Now, if I had told my family, ah, I want to lay down, I have a headache. Yeah, well, of course you have a headache. You're not eating, you should eat something. You know, they would have been so pleased had I just joined them and ate. They don't want me to not eat. And my daughter, bless her heart, and she's the one person in my family that may watch my videos. If you're watching, Emma, hi, love you. She said, uh, I'm a little bit concerned when you go away you're going to be in a hotel for three days and you know there's no one there to look after you so if you feel dizzy or faint or anything just send me a message and uh, that's comforting that's really nice to know people care right so i appreciate that emily 
but I reminded her that I don't think that this creates a health crisis and that I'm only in my fifth day and I did this for 75 days and the few um, difficulties that I experienced as I learned was related to my electrolytes. I learned about that and I've been doing that already. Normally I say do that between the fourth and seventh day but I felt like I needed it sooner. I feel like when I first did my very first fast, all of those electrolytes and that those essentials were never tested in my body. They were never tapped out. But since I've been practicing fasting numerous times, like don't forget, I did 75 days, but I've already done two or three almost 30 day fasts, some seven, five day fasts, and I try to flex my fasting muscle every week and do a water fasting Monday that I call it. I just eat on Sunday and eat on Tuesday. And when I was doing OMAD, that was pretty much a 47 hour fast, weekly fast. So I should talk about that a little bit more about on another, on another video. But I had the best results when I did Keto OMAD and, um, and also a weekly water fasting Monday, which was pretty much a, almost a two day fast. I maintained and I lost beyond my fast. And in the last little while I've been doing carnivore and I've been gaining weight. I don't know, I don't know, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. So it's easy though. It's really easy to do carnivore. It's nice. And I, I never get sick of the food or bored, but I haven't learned how to do that right. And um, I don't think, I think if I can do my king's feasts, where I eat for an hour and get all my calories for a day and I'm so satiated, I'm so full, which is the feeling I like, that I should just go back to what, what I've experienced that works for me. Anyway, um, there was one other thing I wanted to say before this video gets too long. Yes, um, I was laying in bed last night feeling kind of sick with my headache into my neck and um, putting my wiper on periodically because I can barely see. I don't know if the rain sound is affecting the audio. If it is, I apologize. I was thinking that, you know, what am I doing? And here's a revelation. Sometimes I doubt myself, you know? What are you doing, Fred? Do you really know anything? And I've never set myself up as an expert. I don't want to be. I know I'm a mentor in as much as I can show people what I've done and tell them how I did it. But I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical expert. I don't, uh, I can't give that kind of advice. And I'm not a scientist. I don't really like the science behind it all so my whole approach is not science although I have a good understanding of it now so sometimes I doubt myself I'm like what am I doing <laughs> I wasn't feeling that great I took my evening electrolytes and I was thinking it through you know about this headache and how I was feeling and I was like well, it's not like you're going to die. <laughs> like, it's just because you haven't eaten food for a couple days. Like, gosh, that was the evening of day four. So it wasn't even four full days. And, you know, I'm taking magnesium, potassium, pink Himalayan salt. I even drank a little bit of pickle juice. I had some heavy whipped cream in my coffee in the morning. Um, oh, I took a daily vitamin. And I've been drinking lots of water. My body has everything it needs, plus it has fat stores. So, yeah. Another thing is 
now I'm in, you know, 226.4, and I feel like, I still feel, and I see my fat. And I wonder, what was I even saying? What I was saying is that I'm 226.4 pounds today, and I'm fat, and I look at myself in the mirror, and I'm fat. You know, I have fat. And... <laughs> The 220s was a threshold that I had a very difficult time ever pushing through into in any other kind of diet protocol I ever did. I had a really good success with Weight Watchers once, but I couldn't, I just seemed to level off at in the 230s. So I'm 226 pounds today and I'm still fat and what I was trying to impart to you is simply this. I don't know how the heck I ever got to 270 pounds and how I was able to even carry myself let alone contend with that. I look at myself now and I look every bit as fat as I, I thought I looked then. My, my eye has readjusted to what I think is acceptable or normal and as I've seen the weight come back on my body since I was under 200 pounds, I really see it and for what it is. You know, denial is really powerful I used to say sometimes yeah I know I'm fat but I'm not that fat there's a lot of people that are way fatter than me blah 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 we get used to the way we look just like when I lost all that weight I, I really had a hard time adjusting to how my face looked because it looked a lot thinner and then after a while that became the new normal and then I looked at photos of myself back in the day with a fat face and I, I really you know whereas I might have thought I looked good that day <laughs> and now I can really see it anyway so that was the point I was trying to make if you been listening all this time and you followed me along my gosh thank you so much I put these videos out because I think it's important I don't do it because I have ambition to be a YouTube star I don't I don't do it because I enjoy it I don't really enjoy being in front of my camera and I have never, I never had that ambition. I don't enjoy editing my videos, putting them up. I don't enjoy any, any of it. What I do enjoy, though, is the results of my work. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy knowing that my work and my effort has made a difference in someone else's life. And that's why I do this. So, if you appreciate, if you appreciate it, let me know. Because that makes all the difference to me, you know. Um, I don't do it for the money. I, I have made about $200, apparently. I can tap in, I can try to recover. I've never tried to recover money from YouTube yet, but apparently I can get about $20 or $200 from YouTube. $225. It's not nothing, right? If I if I was more diligent in putting up 
content that would grow. It's just not what I want to be and what I want to do. So I put out my videos to help people because when I started, I was told by my daughter, you really need to document this because you can really help people and I believe it's true. I've seen it, right? And we get by giving anyway, right? It comes back to you. So by sharing my story and then seeing other people succeed in life and maybe even exceed my results, which I've seen that in numerous cases, then those people, while they might have started because they were inspired by me, have now inspire me, right? So we developed some kind of synergy there. A circle. Okay, so if you're still with me, thank you very much for watching. If you find what I've said beneficial or useful, and you think someone else might benefit from my channel, my sentiments, and my journey, please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that little bell icon to get updates of future videos, and as always, love yourself, stay safe, and be awesome.